Is there regret? What's gone down? Let's take a deeper look. We're here to do the karmic third party read for those of you that don't know yes i do cover the spiritual path weekly and we do have this content released ahead of the crowd if you do want these um early jump through have a look at our youtube channel and it does have an intro video as to what the levels of memberships offer and what we have going on now i've already put a clarifier i really do feel especially with this crowning energy um, psychically, what I was speaking is the karmic third party, especially from last week, there's been a bit of a transition and I feel it's almost like universe is speaking to them. They're not listening to their higher consciousness and they really should be doing something in a different way. And I definitely feel this is a mercury energy. So it's the way they're communicating, the way they're thinking, the way they're reacting. Um, and especially where it comes to love, I'm noticing the frog. Um, I'm, I'm looking at in order to gain this crown, um, there's a lot of the green-eyed monster going on. And, again, it could be speaking before they're thinking. It can be re a reaction. But there's something here of a spiritual test that they're supposed to learn in a karmic sense and they're needing to go inside themselves, but they potentially could be going outside. Now, we do have... In the mix this week, I do feel for some there could have been a wrap-up, especially relating to the past. There's some karmic cycle wrapping up. I also feel that the possibilities that they had, um, that they thought this situation was going to be, um, there could have been for some of them a tower moment. Um, this could have been internally, but I'm kind of feeling this is more so externally. I do feel they were exploring their options. This could have been with counterpart, with the way things were going. I also feel because of last week's energy flowing on to this week, I really do feel these individuals are kind of really looking at the aftermath of potentially a tower moment and maybe what they need to do now to bounce back. Now, many times, especially if a karmic cycle comes to an end, um, these individuals from a psychological belief do try to go, it's a little bit like going back into a mental imprisonment, going back into uh, a circumstance, even if they know it's difficult, even if they know it's not for them, due to the fact there could be some codependency. Now, I do feel spiritually they're not understanding that there's a give and take and there is a requirement inside of connections. Um, there could be some sacrifice uh, that, they're having to make, but they're not willing to make, so to speak. And I'm noticing in the heart um, space, uh, we do have the angel in reverse. And it is something to do with spiritual work and the notion of give and take. Now, the card says in reverse, we're going to interpret it in reverse as well. Your angels are guiding you and protecting you on your right spiritual journey now it's funny because again when something is not for us we always hear the term rejection is universe's protection but a lot of times we don't tend to accept the status quo it's like okay why you know especially for those of you who have been on a spiritual path and you're more um privy to the information and the terminology a lot of times even from a humanistic experience you're kind of hitting your head against the wall and you're going, gee, you know, what's going on here? Why are these doors coming up? Why are these blockages coming up? Why do I keep beating my head against the wall? And many times it can be A, because something's not right. B, is because there could be a lesson. Or it could be protection because it's not correct for you or it's not the right time. But these individuals in the mix this week were meant to do some spiritual work and there had been some avoidance. And they can be feeling like they're, could I say, resting on their laurels? Yeah, to a degree. Um, from a karmic um, codependent point of view, it's a comfort zone. I think a lot of us really back around April, May with the eclipse cycles, a lot of that's lingering and it's going to be going on for about six months where we directly are wanting to go back into our core where we're feeling protected, where we're feeling grounded with the nodes shift. 
um, into Aries. It's this courage to be disliked. It's this um, Mars vivacious energy. And I do feel the kind of stuck. They're like, no, no, no. I want to go back to the way I used to be. I wanted to, I, I, I'm willing to make these sacrifices. But the reality is there could be something that they can't directly turn around at this point. I'm noticing the dragonfly. Whenever I see dragonfly totem, it is to do with the fact from a spiritual point of view, you are able to adapt to the circumstances and you're able to bend and be flexible. And Uranus and Taurus is all to do with that. And this individual is not budging. It's almost like this fixation, this tunnel vision. No, I have to have it this way. And they're wanting to go back, um, repeating a pattern. And again, I'm noticing the green. The green is always to do with the heart chakra. Um, it can be the higher heart chakra with Chiron. Chiron and Aries this month is going retrograde. We have Venus retrograde. And so there's a necessity in order to have these breakthroughs is for, um, how could you put it, transformation, difficulties. You know, it, it's a little bit like a gym instructor saying to you, anything worth having is hard work. And when you spiritually are dedicated to a process, you are you are busting it. You are turning up like Beyonce, you are making those things happen, but you also won't take it personal if something's not for you, right? You'll you'll be like, this is energetically not for me. It's not an alignment. I do feel this inability, inflexibility to transform is making this individual feel, feel, uh, to feel very inadequate, very unable to and out of their depth. Now, some of these things are going to take a lot of work, and this is something maybe that spiritually um, they weren't quite prepared for. I don't know why I'm getting this imagery of going into Hades, you know, being taken down into the Plutonian energy. It's almost like whatever this is, it's happened so quick that it's given them no warning. Yes, yeah, something has remained so consistently inconsistent that this directly is affecting a lot of facets in their life. Definitely an awakening. Um, unfortunately for karmic energies, it's, you know, and I don't like to compartmentalize people because, look, I'll be perfectly honest with you. At a point in my journey, for those of you that don't know, I am a twin flame. Um, generally speaking, a twin flame path, it is from birth. You then have the activation um, and then you have the cycle of the in and out with your twin and there's a lot to do with healing. There's a lot to do with that process. The one thing I definitely have learned from the spiritual process is <clears throat> sometimes these wounds and these patterns, you know, even for myself as being quite an awakened person, um, definitely at a point in my path, I was very baffled. I was very disappointed with myself. I was like, wow, you have some patterns you need to sort out. I do feel this individual, it's the best they know, okay? So it's where they feel comfortable. And I think all of us can understand, um, <clears throat> pardon me, we don't naturally change because we want to. And I don't mean that, you know, in a trivial sense. I mean, some of the most difficult changes come from tower moments and they're traumatic. <coughs> this individual is very traumatized. This individual knows no better. It's almost like it's their comfort zone. This is all I know. Now, these can be manipulation patterns. These can be codependency. Um, you know, maybe always having the next person, you know, the backup plan. Um being so reliant on another, uh, you know, their lifestyle at the moment, they are quite frustrated by. They are still living in the old paradigm of how things used to be. They may not be on each other people's wavelengths. Um, I don't know why they're making reference to the intellect. Uh, and I don't mean this in a terrible way. There's what they're showing me psychically is almost with the group they're mixing around. There's um, almost like they feel like a foreign body. They they are trying to be witty. Um, and, you know, we all in our own energy. Where is the card? I was seeing it earlier. 
No, I'll pick it later. Yeah, it's, it's almost like we all individually have our own unique gifts, our own unique perspectives. But sometimes we're super uncomfortable to be in our own skin, to be in our own vibe. And I feel the self-sabotaging energy is almost this disbelief in self, this old patterns that die hard and really going back into it. And they're having courage, but in the wrong ways. They're having courage because they want to remain in that vibration. Even that, to a degree, is causing grief. There is a pattern here and a system here that they've been working with for a very long time. And I just keep seeing this bouncing. Um, it's almost like a, a bouncing you know, a bit like karaoke and you're reading the words and the ball is bouncing on it. It feels like it's a very repetitious pattern and it's something that's synchronistically comfortable. Um, it's definitely a pattern. It's like a heartbeat to them. Okay, what am I saying here? Okay, there's a lot of regret. Bless. You know, it's really sad when you see this and it's only, look, it's very healthy in your twin flame path to when you are, you know, the further into your ascension you get. And I do, in a, in a coaching setting, I definitely coach twins um, in our members hub. We have coaching sessions. We have the element reads. And there was a point in my journey, which was, you know, it's where you're ready to do that mirror work and you're, you're having to dig in. And it's not because the system says you need to do the work, it's because you don't want that ascension anymore. So you're in there, you know, you're digging in and you're you're no longer wanting to vibe in that vibration where it completely defines you and you're getting the psychic attacks and you're feeling like crap. So you are doing the work, baby. And I remember back to thinking to myself, how very similar my old patterns were to a karmic, except they were way miles away, okay? And so there is a point we can accidentally see some of these patterns and go, wow, you don't know your full potential of what you could be because of what you're causing inside your life. And it's um, it's it's disappointing. It's um, sad to observe. Uh, and, you know, I also didn't want to have a bad relationship any longer with feminines. I wanted to have a very healthy um, relationship with feminines. I know, and that was with the relationship with myself. And, it's, you know, this is for those of you that are cross-watching and this is a feminine individual or masculine regardless. This is the current energy this week and how it's playing out. You know, to make peace with that is also to know where they're coming from and why they're reacting that way. And that, in fact, it actually isn't personal. It's a pattern and it's a habit. It's all they know. Um, can the cycle be broken 100% and 99.9% always does because we evolve, we grow, and we can't stay in that stagnancy. Whether this person knows it or not, they are moving into a new birth. I do feel they're turning into maybe a, um, a tribal energy. They could be turning in towards friends, um, for moral support, um, there is a little birdie on their shoulder that is telling them, you know, let love live. And it's love for self. It's it's love for understanding that we do the best that we can, even if we don't um, realise that a lot of these things were carried with us from childhood. And I see this individual this week actually carrying a very large pattern. It's, it's unfortunately very toxic. You know, I'm even the, the message I was getting from the flower was really, they love me, they love me not. And you know, it's almost like we need this significant gesture in order to believe that something is so. However, in the internal truth, when you do your work, you spiritually know that you're worth it. And so there is this advice from Gaia to these individuals this week is to actually do something differently, to think before they speak, to think before they react, to tune into where their blockages are and why these patterns have been occurring. But I do unfortunately see from an action oriented energy this week, this pattern is continuing with this person and it is bringing this person undone. And it can be the demise in the situation. I do feel for some, they already have had a breakup. And I do feel this even can be individuals trying to return back to counterparts um, because of our Venus retrograde. So just be aware you know, you're always going to be safe, guys. You're always going to, especially during retrogrades, you're going to go into it and you're going to be looking at it and going, okay, let me see whether this person has evolved. What am I learning from this circumstance? Am I embodying some of this frequency? And that's the healthy way to look at things is A, to look at it as the masculine, the feminine, the karmic, which I cover, 
But then to backtrack, and when you're triggered and you're doing your shadow work, go, how am I embodying this frequency? Do I have some insecurities? Do I have some old patterns that are coming up? And do I need to work through those? Because I do unfortunately feel for those that are less um, aware and that with that emotional intelligence there, I do feel they're really bringing themselves undone. Stay tuned. I will chat back in with you next week. If you do want a private read, you can come through. Otherwise, we do have our YouTube members. Love to see you there. Otherwise, I'll see you soon.